So my talk today is on holistic healing, a healing journey. Uh, I'm going to talk about love, laughter, movement, and meditation. And just a little warning at some point, we're going to have a little movement happening here. So just so you're prepared. So love. We're all familiar with the phrase, you know, love yourself. We hear it, we read it, we're told our whole lives. First, you have to love yourself, you know, before anything else can work in this world. But what does this mean when it comes to healing ourselves? This idea took me on my own journey to heal naturally. Once diagnosed with an autoimmune disease, I initially went to denial. Isn't that where we first go, denial? No, not me. <laughs> and I carried on with my life as though everything was normal. But I soon realized that this was not true, and the pain and the changes in my body couldn't be ignored. Well, the next step was I became angry. Because, hey, I'd followed all the rules, I ate a good diet, I exercised, I meditated. But, so this doesn't happen to people like us, right? <laughs> but despite my healthy approach, this disease had made itself well known. So next was the decision to listen to my gut in instincts and do some research on autoimmune diseases. Well, to the dismay of my doctor who said, there's only one option, <laughs> conventional medicine. Now, there'll be some side effects, but, and we can't promise anything. <laughs> well, that didn't go over well with me. So I said, okay, I'll call you later. I'll make another appointment. And I went out to my car. I remember closing the door. And I sat in there and I screamed really loud. And I go, why me? Why me? Well, after that burst of anger, and after a few months of research, and applying some of the alternative approach I had, the information I'd gotten, I felt some relief, but it wasn't complete. So I sat in meditation, which is my other go-to tool in my toolbox. And while I was meditating, the words, love yourself, kept flashing. And I thought, OK, was this uh, something that is still left over from my 60s, you know? <laughs> you, guys, you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I mean, this kept flashing. It was, you know, lights around it, and it's like, love yourself, love yourself. Well, finally, I thought, well, wait a minute. I do love myself, so, so what does this mean for me right now where I am? It was at that moment that I realized, well, okay, I had pushed myself to limits physically and otherwise all throughout my life. I was a strong, get-it-done kind of person. And any pain or discomfort was always met with, eh, just ignore it and keep moving, it'll go away. But I could see now that I needed to accept my pain. That was the other thing, you know, when we have something that we consider wrong, instead of accepting it and looking at it and moving through it, we tend to, you know, push it away. If we ignore it, it won't happen, it's not real. And with that understanding, I had to open myself up to the messages that my disease was trying to communicate with me, because it was. The very first time I had some pain, it was trying to tell me, don't do that anymore, OK? You know, don't lift that. Don't move this. And I ignored that. But there was always a message. Our body talks to us, communicates with us. So I figured, OK, what the heck? I'll allow myself to feel the discomfort and you know, just focus on the areas of my body that was crying out for love and attention, and then applied the information I was getting. Because that's the other thing. Once I focused, I was getting information that was good for me. And this was all for my own healing protocol. So by taking the time to tune in, being gentle with myself, and trusting in the guidance, that's when I was able to begin to heal. Our bodies are wise and able to heal itself if we listen with love and care. <coughs> so <laughs> the messages for me <coughs> was about food being my medicine. And I love to eat. I mean, I ate anything and everything on the planet before my diagnosis. 
And uh, but what helped me a lot because I go out with my friends and they're like, how come you can pass up that chocolate cake or the sugar or this or that? And I said, I have this mantra I repeat to myself all the time. Food is my medicine. When I keep saying that over and over again, it really allows me to say no to the things that are not good for me. So food is my medicine. You guys might come up with your own mantra. Ah, laughter. I must say that my sense of humor has always kept me from falling off the edge. <laughs> as well as, uh, you know, good dark chocolate, they both stimulate the feel-good endorphins in our bodies. <laughs> so laughter, dark chocolate, maybe a little bit of both. <laughs> um, and this just helps us to feel elated. This process is known to alleviate pain and can move us towards healing. You guys know what I'm talking about, those good endorphins, right? You've had a good belly laugh once in a while. So I love technology. You know, I, I used to kind of like, ah, not for me. But I love that you can Google anything now. So I thought, well, I need to have a couple of jokes here because I never remember the ones I'm told. <laughs> so here we go. We can blame this on Google. Um, so this is a physics joke. <clears throat> what did Donald Duck say in his physics class? Anybody? Quark, quark. Hey, quark, quark, that's it, yay. <laughs> 10 points back there. <laughs> How about this next one? Where does bad light end up? Bad light, where does bad light end up? In a prison. <laughs> what did the policeman say to his belly button? You're under a vest. <laughs> okay, last one, I promise. Why shouldn't you write with a broken pencil? Because it's pointless. <laughs> so on my own journey, when I was 13, I had my appendix removed and I was sent home to heal. So living in a small village at the time and in poverty, you know, we had this little black and white television. And there weren't too many choices back then for shows, but The Three Stooges was on. You guys remember that? Yeah. <laughs> you're giving away your age if you remember that. <laughs> and so it seemed popular amongst, you know, everyone in the village at the time. So here I am with my surgery. We're lying on a mattress with my siblings on the floor, and we'd watch The Three Stooges every night. I would laugh so hard. I mean, I had to literally hold on to my scar and my stomach so I wouldn't, you know, burst the stitches. But within a few days, I was able to move with more freedom. And my checkup revealed that I had healed even faster than expected. So now, when I am having a flare-up, or sometimes, every once in a while, I'm struggling to open even a water bottle or, you know, walk comfortably, I listen to comedy radio, I have that on in my car, or oh, I, I watch a funny film. So laughter is amazing. Don't forget to laugh. I mean, to me, the most important thing is I've learned to laugh at myself. And I even use the laughter when I get up in the morning and things aren't working well and I'm trying to go up the steps and so I make a little song out of it or a little dance. <laughs> and then I laugh at how silly I am. And believe it or not, that helps because it creates all these good endorphins that flow through our bodies. So love and laughter. And I'm sure you guys remember that many, many books have been written on laughter and healing. And uh, you probably recall Bernie Siegel, Dr. Bernie Siegel. Yeah, one of his books was called Humor and Healing. Um, so if you haven't or you need to, you can uh, check that out. So next on the agenda is movement. So movement has always been a big part of my life. Most of my life I would walk long distances because, you know, where I grew up, we didn't have cars all the time, maybe a bicycle here or there. Um, so you walked all through the village. You walked wherever you were going, walked through the sugarcane fields. 
And so I was always walking, and then I, later on in my life when I came here, I got into running or dancing. I just always loved movement. I mean, it was, it was second nature to me. And when I was diagnosed with uh, rheumatoid and osteoarthritis, and my joints were sending strong messages that I could no longer manipulate my body, keyword there, manipulate my body, to continue the same intensity of movements. Well, this was the most difficult part of my diagnosis to accept. After all, moving my body not only kept me strong, but also it really helped my mind clear and de-stress. And that has, is really one of the biggest things for me. When we move and we sweat a little bit or we get the blood circulating, it really clears your mind. And uh, so I sat in silence, tuned into my body, and I said, there's no way that I can stop moving. What am I going to do if I can't continue to do all these things that I've done in my life? And so a new way of continuing to move just started to emerge, this picture like, oh, you don't have to stop. You just have to find a different way that now works for you to move your body. And so I was like, okay, this is awesome. And I really began to listen at that moment. <coughs> And so what I learned to do is to change the intensity and the length of time that I move my body. So walking or hiking was maybe a shorter time frame. And yes, yeah, some days I didn't want to get out of bed, but I would push myself and after a few moments of any kind of movement, my body would loosen up and I could function throughout the day. I recently saw a video <laughs> and I laughed when I saw it, uh, of a shaking technique. And so this person I knew who was actually in a wheelchair because of different types of arthritis actually went to ballet or one of these places and stayed there and was doing this shaking technique and got himself out of a wheelchair. So that skeptical, you know, part of me, it's like, oh, really? Okay. So I thought, well, why not? I got up one morning, nobody's around. And, you know, I'm shaking and moving my body around. And all of a sudden, I noticed that some of the pain dissipated. And so I began to take this whole movement thing, you know, more seriously. So, whether you walk, dance, or shake your body in one spot, any movement will move you towards less pain and more energy. A side effect of movement, again, is releasing those good endorphins and, again, clearer thinking. So I'm going to ask everybody to stand up where you are for just 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Ray, would you like to come up here for a moment? So this is my son, Ray. And he is he's actually a very good musician and artist. Um, so he's going to give us a little rhythm there so we can move. So if you want to stand in one spot, all right, let's go. Keep moving, shaking, moving your hands, elbows, or you could, you know, you could uh, do a little bit of that, you know. <laughs> all right, Joe, come on. I know you can do better than that. Woohoo! All right. Thank you, Leslie. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Rainbow. <laughs> All right, you watch afterwards. Any pain you have will dissipate. Woo yeah, you too. <laughs> All right, how are you guys feeling? Woohoo! All right, one last big one, come on. One last one, yeah. All right. Woo, thank you, Ray. Yeah. All right, take a seat. Thank you, thank you all. For those people who may still struggle a little bit with meditation and sitting still long enough, um, I would recommend some movement. I find that sometimes if I'm too wired up and I you know, just move my body a bit, then I can take a breath and my body relaxes. So I know we're all different the way we meditate and all of that. So I just wanted to offer that up. So meditation, this is the most important tool in my toolbox. 
I've been meditating for most of my life and studied various techniques and with a variety of teachers. But the biggest lesson from my journey was there is not one way to meditate. There's my way, there's your way, there's your way, there's your way. You can sit still for an hour. You can walk and meditate. I've done dishes and meditated. So you can meditate in whatever way works for you. So I've been a meditation teacher myself for about 30 years. And when I work with clients, I find out you know, what technique that they're comfortable with. And I create a meditation that fits their lifestyle. It doesn't matter which technique you use, as long as you can relax your body and still your mind long enough to tap into your intuition and able to listen without judgment. Able to listen without judgment. I think that's the key there. I was once asked by a minister the difference between praying and meditation. And immediately it just flowed out. I responded. I said, well, you know, when we pray, we're talking to God or the universe. And I feel like when we're meditating, we're listening. So, you know, sometimes we do a lot of asking and talking, but if we take the time to listen, it's amazing the gifts that come in, the things that we're given. So whether you are religious or spiritual or neither, meditation can be a very important part of your healing protocol. After all, tuning into our body's needs can give us some guidance towards being healthier and happier and have some control over our own healing journey. Meditation can help us deal with anxiety, depression, and just fill us with a sense of peacefulness. But I, I just want to leave you with this. I want to get this across, and that is we have to learn to listen to our own bodies. They do speak to us all the time. There's communication going on, but we're so busy and caught up in our lives, we don't listen, just like I did in the very beginning. So a holistic approach to healing can help us lead happier lives, and it puts us in the driver's seat our own healing journey. Because, you know, when we just go to doctors and we say, okay, do your magic, what are we doing? We're, we're, we're giving up, aren't we? We're saying, I don't have the ability, I don't have the power. And we're giving away our power in a sense. But belief in a higher power, whatever that is for each of us, can really empower us to lead happier and healthier lives. So I'd like to go into a short meditation. So if you could take a few deep breaths and do whatever you do to get yourself in that place to you know, still your body, still your mind. So maybe just take a few deep breaths. As you breathe in, just release, release anything that is holding you back. Let all those blocks go, release it. As you breathe in, breathe in a sense of love and peace. And just knowing, knowing that you have the power, you have the ability to lead a happy and healthy life, that you know Whatever you want to call it, your spirit, your soul, that inner self knows all the answers are there. So as you breathe and you relax, I believe that love is at the center of everything. So quietly, inwardly say to yourself, I accept love as the healing power of life. I permit love to reach out from my heart center to all parts of my body that needs healing. And then I extend that love to others. I trust in the guidance of love because I believe it is the power of God in the universe. I feel that love is flowing through me to heal every situation I meet.
love opens the way before me and makes it perfect. Love forgives everything. It purifies everything. Love converts weakness into strength. Fear into faith. And nurtures us as we move forward in healing our bodies, our minds. With all your heart.